Hello and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. A lot of people have actually emailed me and asked me that how you can load images using a URL in Swift UI. The, the problem is that there is an image view, but if you like to create an image view, it doesn't really allow you to pass in the URL. It doesn't allow you to pass in the URL, but it does allow you to pass in a UI image. So we need to do something to pass in a URL, but you can see it doesn't really take in a URL. So there are a couple of ways to fix that. One which we're gonna take is to create our own custom view using a Swift view, UI view control. And using that, we can actually pass in the URL and load the image, convert it to UI image, and then feed it to the image view control. Okay, that's a lot of stuff I know. So let's get started. The first task is to actually load the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file. This will be called image loader. And the image loader will be responsible for loading the image, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use Swift UI. So this is more of a service that we are creating. And import combine. We're gonna create a class called image loader. And we are also make, going to make sure that this is using the bindable object protocol. Why bindable object protocol? Well, once the image is loaded, and the image is loaded asynchronously, once the image is loaded, it is actually given or it notifies the subscribers that the image has been loaded. All right, so one of the things that you have to do if you are using the bindable object protocol, the only requirement is that you implement the did change event. So let's go ahead and do that. This will be a pass through subject. The first argument is the one that we're gonna return, which is the image loader. And we can return null, you'll see that in a moment, and this will never fail, okay? All right, now the other thing is that we will also need to have a property of the actual image that has been downloaded. So I'm just gonna say downloaded image. This will be a UI image. And now we can actually work on our load function. The load function is gonna take in a URL. And this URL will be the URL of the image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check if the URL of the image is correct or not. So I'm gonna just pass in over here, URL, else if it's not correct. I mean, you can do other stuff over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and say image URL is not correct, but obviously you can do whatever you want over here, like wrap that in a try catch block. URL session dot shared dot data task, which is this one the URL of the image. So basically we're trying to download the image, passing in the image URL, which is right over here. The completion handler, I'm gonna use the trailing closure, data, response, and error. Don't forget to call resume or else nothing's gonna happen. So over here now we can actually check that if we got the data or not. So data equals to data error equals to nil if the error is nil, else do something. So if there is some problem in downloading, we can actually go ahead and fire dip chain, notify our subscribers sending in nil. And the reason we can send in nil is that we actually told it to be optional. One other thing to note is that whenever you're calling did change, you have to make sure that you're calling it on the main thread. So main.async and make sure that you call it on the main thread, always. There we go. Okay, that's good. If we do get an image and actually go ahead and return it from here. Self.download image equals to, so this one is gonna fire when you actually get the image. So get the image in the form of data, we feed in the data and we get the UI image. Once again, we will call dispatch.main.async. And this time we are gonna call the did change dot send, but this time we're gonna send in self. And we have already assigned the downloaded image, the image that 
we just download it using the image URL. And that's pretty much it for the image loader. Let's actually see what's going on over here. Okay, I think I deleted that, so let's go ahead and add that. There we go. Okay, so that image loader part is done. The problem is that although we created the image loader, the image itself doesn't allow you to pass in the URL. So what should we do about that? Well, we can actually go ahead and create our own custom view. So let's see how we can do that. In order to create your custom view, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file, and this will be our Swift UI view. So I'm gonna go ahead and say URL image. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and import Swift UI, obviously, because this will be a Swift UI control or a view. Struct URL image, which will be a view. And the only requirement is that we create the body, which is some view. And then over here, I'm just gonna say right now, URL image, because I need still need to work on it, right? Okay, so what should we do over here in the URL image? Well, we need to first of all, allow the user to pass in the URL, the URL of the image. So init URL, passing in the URL as a string, we will also allow the user to pass in the placeholder, which means if, they, if there is no image or something bad happens, then you can use a placeholder. And for placeholder, we can use some sort of a system name or system icon like photo. And I can also create a property over here, like a placeholder, which can be an image property. This is the actual image view, the Swift UI view. And I can assign it over here, placeholder. Okay. This is good. We also need to use the image loader service that we built earlier on. So let's go ahead and create that. Private var image loader equals to image loader. Now, one of the things that you need to do is to make sure that you are using the object binding protocol or the attribute with the image loader. And the reason that you have to use the object binding is the image loader is going to load the image asynchronously and it's going to fire the did change event. Remember that we implemented the did change right over there. What this will do is this will notify wherever you're using it, this will notify the image loader and it will allow your body to be refreshed with some new data. And this will only happen if you mark this with object binding, which we have done. So now inside the body, when the image is actually loaded, this is gonna get refreshed again, which is going to call the body again. And then we can actually go ahead and uh, refresh the body and use the image. So if let UI image equals to self.imageloader.download image. So if we have downloaded the image, then we are simply going to return the image. This is the built-in image view. Guess what? It does take a UI image and we already have the UI image. So we're gonna just pass that one up. Else, we are going to return the placeholder because in that case, we were not able to download the image. We're just gonna return the placeholder. Okay, that's good. Now we need to just test it out. Well, the first thing we need is some sort of a URL. And the second thing that we need is to use our URL image control. So let me go ahead and get the URL first. Okay, so I got the URL. Let me go ahead and put the URL somewhere over here. Cat image. Okay, so we got the URL. There's some other stuff that I need to do. I need to go to the info.plist and I need to make sure that I will be able to make the request. Uh, I'm gonna go over here. I don't know if you actually need that or not, but I'm just gonna do it. Usually when you're making a request, then you do need to set this and arbitrary downloads or arbitrary loads to yes. This is usually happens when you uh, are trying to get or make a request to HTTP and not HTTPS, but I've just made it over here. Okay. 
Okay, so everything should be set up now. I'm going to go ahead, remove the text, and now I can actually use the URL image, the one view that we actually built in, uh, that we implemented. And you can see that it actually takes in the URL, which we already have. So I'm going to go ahead and pass in the URL. And let's see that if it actually displays it in the canvas or not. It might take a little bit of time, but hopefully it will be able to provide me some sort of an outlook for this particular content view. Okay, so you can see currently that it displays the uh, the photo. So that means that something bad has actually happened and it's not allowing us to fetch the image. Okay, so I found the issue, which is right over here in the URL image. You see that when we are creating the URL image Swift UI view, we never really pass in the URL to our image loader. So let's go ahead and do that, load function, and simply passing in the URL. Let's go ahead and build that. Okay, now we can actually go to the content view. So it was my mistake. Uh, here we go. And now hopefully it will be able to load the image that we wanted it to load. So obviously make sure that in the URL image view, uh, you are actually calling the correct one. Let's go ahead and run this now. Should be able to load it this time, hopefully. Sometime it does take a while for this preview to refresh, and here we go. So you can see that we were able to load the image using the HTTP uh, URL. That's great. So this is how you will create a Swift UI custom view and the image loader, which will fetch the image, and you simply use it to display the image. That's great. If you like this video and you find it helpful and you want to support my channel and my videos, then check out my course on Udemy. And actually, I have a lot of courses on Udemy. It's called Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for Any Apple Device. Um, you can see it's like four and a half hours course. And I keep on improving the course and adding a lot of more contents. As you can see, there are a couple of contents that are coming soon. But uh, it's an amazing course, and I already have around close to 189, you can see, students enrolled. And I will be adding a lot of stuff to the course. Now, the coupon for the course is right there in the description, along with a lot of other courses. I am not listing all of my courses because I have like a lot of course, a lot of courses. I'm uh, listing out some uh, really popular courses. So I would really appreciate if you can use the coupon to get the actual course. So that will be really, really generous of you. If you use the coupon, uh, I get you get a great deal, and I get to keep like much higher percentage of the revenue that you buy the course. So if you buy the course for ten dollars, I get to keep like nine dollars. If you use the coupon, if you don't use the coupon, then I get to keep like a dollar. All right. So so that's how it works. And thank you so much. And the coupons are there. Um, let me know if you need anything. And uh, thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much.